Welcome to part 28 of the lecture on designing organic synthesis. Our subject of today is the universal retron of the olefin metastasis. Well, olefin metastasis we already discussed in detail in uh, the lecture on uh, catalytic organometallics. We also had uh, already one example in retrosynthetic analysis within the synthesis of epotilone, the crucial macrocyclization was a ring closing metathesis. However, olefin metathesis has revolutionized the way our target molecules um, are uh, analyz analyzed within retrosynthetic analysis and then, of course, uh, synthesized, and we should again have a closer look uh, in terms of retrosynthetic analysis. And therefore, we, of course, should ask, uh, well, what is the retron of an olefin metathesis? And we will just concentrate on the ring-closing metathesis. So general, well, not a general scheme, but an example simple example of a ring closing metastasis is well, we have this uh, diene, not conjugated diene, a non conjugated diene. We need generally a ruthenium or well, ruthenium cabine complex. Sometimes also molybdenum cabine complexes are involved. And uh, in this case, we would observe that ethylene is eliminated and cyclohexene would be formed. So, now, what is the, the details of a mechanism uh, uh, most of you should uh, be aware of? Uh, 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions and then cycloreversion, and uh, also that story with uh, the somewhat dead end in the catalytic cycle, but since it's uh, um, an equilibrium process, uh, it will get out of this dead end again, and, and so on. We discussed that uh, before. So, this would be the result of the ring-closing olefin metastasis. So, but what is the retron? Is it just an olefin moiety? Well, okay, we should uh, have a closer look what kind of olefins we can approach with uh, this uh, metastasis. And, um, well, for instance, let's have a look at this nice example related to carbohydrate chemistry. Most of the hydroxyl groups protective uh, with uh, benzyl protecting groups. But um, here we already have an enol ether, and at this position, already an allylation has been performed. So now it's the combination of an enol ether and an olefin. Does that perform um, ring-closing metastasis reaction? Well, indeed, 20% of a ruthenium catalyst at 60 degrees and the reaction, the ring closing metathesis will take place just nicely.
giving rise to these two transfused heterocycles. Yield 89%. <coughs> so, and uh, structure of the catalyst involved an heterocyclic carbene complex sterically hindering mesityl substituents. Here we have the ruthenium coordinated starting with uh, this carbene complex chloride here chloride there and hysterically demanding tris cyclohexyl phosphine ligand. Well, so, okay, also hetero atoms, atoms at that position are, with, by choosing the right catalyst and the right conditions, um, also accessible as target molecules. Next example. What about this one? Could make a difference because if we now eliminate ethylene, then tetra, a tetra substituted olefin will be the result. Does that work? Yes, it does. With about almost quantitative yield, albeit you need somewhat modified ruthenium catalyst. Well, they succeeded in having a second and heterocyclic carbene coordinated with a special substitution pattern telling us that a lot of optimization has taken place until they have developed this catalyst. So, <coughs> overall, <coughs> obviously, the ring closing olefin metathesis. is able to provide an access to target compounds which will exhibit, exhibit this kind of moiety X may be carbon with two substituents, R and R prime. Here also R and R prime can at least be methyl groups. I'm not sure about having some aryl substituents there. And X for sure can also be an oxygen. I didn't find uh, any example for enamine formation in literature. But I might be wrong. Okay. Maybe we are already on the way to developing the right catalyst for that. So now, 
we can complete our scheme. So again, this is a retron. And since this partial structure you can find in a lot of target molecules, well, keep in mind, even if you don't have that olefin in your target molecule, You just can add within your retrosynthetic analysis the olefin, and then you have the retron of uh, the um <coughs> uh, ring closing olefin metathesis. So that means, um, well, there are so many examples you can think of. Uh, well, the name a universal, some kind of universal retron is, I think, justified. So, and uh, starting material then for the ring closing metathesis would be then something like that. Where you indeed also can have additional substituents here. Well, mainly ethylene is eliminated, but sometimes even propylene or other examples are known. Okay, so here we have a retron, and moreover, Enantio selective ring closing olefin metathesis is also known. Let's have a look at some examples. This compound, as you have already noticed, uh, is of course achiral, since it's a meso compound. And now with a molybdenum cabine complex carrying a chiral ligand. And Anansio selective ring closing metathesis was achieved well ninety percent yield of this structure of an aggregation pheromone of some beetles. While 60% in nonsumeric excess is not very good, but at least uh, it was some kind of starting point. And uh, meanwhile, there are more examples with uh, better enantio selectivity <coughs> again benzyl protecting group
a chiral same type of catalyst now 83% yield but already 87% non-sumeric excess complete hydrogenation of this double bond, that double bond and uh, hydrogenating of this uh, benzyl protecting group then you end up with uh, the well-known alkaloid are conein. Another very nice example is a combination, shows a combination of ring closing plus ring opening. Metastasis. Metastasis, olefin metastasis between this olefin and that one. It is the ruthenium catalyst, an equilibrium reaction, but the driving force that the reaction goes in this, mainly in this direction, simply derives from the fact that these uh, norbornene moieties are already somewhat strained. So, the olefin metastasis will combine or connect this carbon with that one and this one with the terminal one. We could do that as an exercise but I will just write it to the blackboard. It's not that difficult. Ninety seven percent yield and uh, well, maybe I was wrong here, and I think it's again that chiral molybdenum catalyst, since an 88% non-sumeric excess was obtained. So, the dimethyl methylene group here at that position. Okay, so <coughs> this is the crucial step in the synthesis of this target terpenoid.
cyclopropane ring here. And indeed, the final step in uh, the synthesis of uh, plus africanol was introducing the cyclopropane ring with uh, Simmons Smith cyclopropanation. So, in the context of the synthesis of another terpenoid, the so called ingenol, well, uh, synthesis uh, of uh, the group of John Wood uh, from Yale University. I won't write down the structure of ingenol, but on the way to ingenol, one was very much interested in getting hands of this structure. Here we have that seven-membered ring and five-membered one annihilated. protected aldehyde functionality and uh, actually two seven-membered moieties form that bicyclic ring system with the annihilated cyclopentane And in addition, cyclopropane ring here, here another methyl group, here's just a hydrogen, and there another stereogenic center. So, we presumably agree that uh, this structure looks rather complicated. So, Let's try a retro synthesis. Well, this 1,2-diol, cis-diol, could be made by well, oxidation with uh, osmium tetroxide, and therefore, we can simplify the structure to this olefin. I will now skip one or the other stereogenic sander. Okay. So, <coughs> and now with a cyclic olefin, we have a universal retron found in here. Let's assume that this double bond has been formed by a ring closing metathesis. So, that will simplify the structure <coughs> so then we have that seven membered ring here cycloheptanone with an allylic side chain here and a spiral annihilation there
actually now some of the stereogenic centers are important. Well, all are important, but uh, these are especially important to understand the next step steps within retrosynthetic analysis. So, <coughs> since it's important that this vinyl group here and the protected aldehyde are on the same side of the cyclopentane ring. Well, <coughs> next step, allulation. So, next simplification is easily achieved if you say, well, this moiety, the aldehyde, there we can imagine that we get that aldehyde by an oxidative cleavage of this CC bond. And now, next retrosynthetic step is Well, how can we call that? This is a ring opening metastasis. Okay, I should write that down. Not ring closing, but ring opening, but again, a metastasis. So here we have a norbonin ring system. And if you treat that with the catalytic ruthenium carbene complex providing ethylene under pressure, then it's a ring opening metathesis, giving rise directly to, these, to this cyclopentane ring system with uh, two vinyl groups on the same side of a ring. So, this has indeed been performed. So, this is then a ring opening metastasis and works indeed with a nice 98% yield, just 2% of a ruthenium catalyst. So, here we have a couple of steps. Oxidative cleavage, well, this time not with an ozonolysis. First of all, diol, 1,2-diol formation with osmium tetroxide. 
This is somewhat less sterically hindered than that. Therefore, it worked rather selectively for this olefin. And then uh, cleavage of the diol with an oxidation with a uh, uh, periodate. And of course, acetalization. Overall yield over these three steps, 73% of that. Here now, base and just allylic bromide. So the alpha alkylation stereo selectively with 92% yield. So, and uh, here, this is the ring closing metathesis. Well, forming this strained ring system, somewhat strained ring system, uh, was obviously not that easy. They applied catalyst loading of 80% ruthenium catalyst and got, well, 45% yield of that. Nevertheless, elegant. Not efficient, but elegant, of course. So, and uh, this osmium tetroxide oxidation, that works nicely, 82%. Let us go back to this structure. How can we simplify that with the next retrosynthetic step? I hope every one of you noticed that we have a cyclohexene moiety. This is the retron of a Diels-Alder reaction. And indeed, We have to generate this alpha beta unsaturated ketone with the exocyclic methylene group and try a cyclo deals alder reaction cyclo addition process well catalyzed by BF3 etherate and uh, a 90 no, a 59% yield of the stereo isomer that synthesis was in need of was obtained about 26% of another stereo isomer. Again, as I said, uh, I think rather clever synthetic plan, synthesis plan, and uh, well, it worked out rather nicely, maybe, but with 45% uh, in the crucial step. So, I think it's time for an exercise let's try to develop a plan for synthesizing a rather prominent target molecule plus Moscone, a very well-known flagrance, and, well, in addition, you should 
try to synthesize that starting from another flagrance, namely from citronellal as the right isomer, as the right enantiomer. So, we are trying now as an exercise to develop a short synthesis with making use of a bidirectional retrosynthetic analysis. And, of course, making use of uh, the ring-closing metathesis. So, just have a try. Okay, so, we want to include that carbon chain into the one of, uh, of uh, Muscone, of a Muscone ring system. And uh, since uh, we are planning a ring-closing olefin metathesis, that means that this um, isopropylidine moiety will be eliminated. So we want to include one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Let's count from here. Here is the carbon with the oxygen functionality. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So the olefin that should be formed through ring-closing metathesis should be located at this position. Then, leading us to this intermediary substrate. So, let us count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's correct. And here, you should have a dodecin, no, a decin side chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. How to get this chain attached to the aldehyde? So I've got the fancy idea what uh, about a uh, hydroacylation, a, uh, a rhodium catalyzed hydroacylation, having that bis olefin, this decadiene with two olefinic terminal moieties. The problem with that is how to avoid then the intramolecular hydroacylation at the citronellale, I should look that up, is that known, connecting this carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, with that one, and forming a six-membered ring. Well, I will look that up in, in SciFinder. But of course, you would have that problem if you try to get the intermolecular hydroacylation done preferentially compared to, to the intramolecular one. Okay. So, let's stay with simple chemistry from uh, the course Organic Chemistry 1. 
why not simply adding a granular reagent to the aldehyde and then oxidizing it. So let's draw the alcohol functionality here. So, and uh, we just uh, need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and uh, magnesium, grinier, and then an oxidation. Well, of course, one could already try the olefin metathesis at a stage of that secondary alcohol. And then hydrogenation or, well, yeah, you, you could uh, either or hydrogenation and secondly oxidation or the other way round. Well, uh, the Grubbs group, the Grubbs group did recyclization indeed at the stage of a secondary alcohol and through this sequence from here to there they achieved a 56% overall yield. I think that is already quite, quite nicely. So, up to now we have uh, only talked about um, um, ring closing metathesis, one ring opening metathesis. What about doing a ring closure at all across intermolecular cross catalysis? Well, it is already quite nicely developed but you have some problems of selectivity and you will address these selectivity problems, for instance, with combining a cross metathesis of an electron rich and an electron poor olefin. This is possible, somewhat complicated. Well, an alternative is nevertheless do the cross metathesis intramolecularly by introducing temporary bridges, temporary silicon bridges, for instance. So, these temporary bridges we already discussed uh, in the lecture of, uh, about uh, uh, stoichiometric organometallics, and now we meet some new examples in the context of olefin metathesis. So, first, treat that two equivalents with one equivalent of diphenosilyl dichloride. Of course, you need a base, in this case it was uh, lutidine. Secondly, then a ring closing olefin metathesis with a ruthenium catalyst.
you get in a very good yield than this product. After hydrolysis, you have the diol. And um, performing that intramolecularly, forming a seven-membered ring that guarantees that you get selectively the cis olefin. Very often in uh, uh, olefin metathesis, you have a problem of mixtures of cis and trans products. Another example, <coughs> which I found rather intriguing, since it has a phosphor atom as temporary bridge, a phosphoric acid ester, triester, Here you have a vinyl group in axial position, and there a vinyl group in equatorial position. Ring closing metathesis. Then provides. This product so in literature they treated that reductively with lithium aluminum hydride then uh, hydrolyzing may be the direct hydrolysis will cause some problems because we have an allyl ester here which is sensitive against uh, nucleophilic displacement, maybe activated uh, with uh, H plus and then just water nucleophilically tax here as an SN2 prime process. Presumably that is the reason why they reduce in one example then hydrolysis. So, and uh, the result then is this nice building block, which uh, certainly will find some applications. And treating this compound with organocuprates as soft nucleophiles, and then also reduction and hydrolysis then the R group is introduced as the nucleophile in an SN2 prime process here, leading then to this type of building block. Last example. You certainly remember there are various methods for enantio selectively constructing cyclopentene 
moieties with two different functional groups, maybe OH and O-acetate and so on, various methods, um, for instance, uh, in the uh, context of um <coughs> synthesizing prostaglandins and so on. Well, here we have a temporary silicon bridge So, with 7% of a ruthenium catalyst, two, well, as a domino process, one ring opening metathesis combined with two ring closing metathesis observed in this case. I'm not sure on the which side uh, the reaction will start. Nevertheless, the result is clear. This one. And just a few steps deprotecting here, eliminating there under uh, protolysis. And this then finally is again an alkaloid with the name minus halosine. Also a very nice synthesis, especially because this time that domino process nicely worked with 97% yield as reported. So final example lecture today, final uh, lecture in this lecture series also overall. So thanks for listening and uh, good luck with your own synthesis. <laughs>